church. So good to be in the room with you guys for Vision Sunday. Let's go ahead and put our hands up and praise our Lord this morning.
today we stand in a place of confidence and boldness, knowing that you wave the banner of victory. Past, present, and future, we look forward with hope because of you, Jesus, only because of you. You are worthy, you are faithful, and you deserve all of our praise. As we sing these lyrics, we recognize that you did stand with David as he had a, a huge giant in front of him. You did stand with your people as they had impossible battles right in front of them, and today you stand with us. So Lord, I pray right now, you know our hearts for the people, the students that are overwhelmed with all the things that are in front of them. I pray your presence to fall on all of us in a fresh and new way. I pray for the parents that feel outmatched. God, come stand with us, be with us. I pray for the marriage that feels like they have a huge uphill battle. We need you, God. We need more of you and less of us. And so, God, I just pray your presence with us today. Go before us, around us, behind us. We love you, God, and we give you all the praise, all the glory. And together we say, amen, amen. Well, hey, find three people. Give them a crispy high five this morning. Make it crisp, okay? Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bridge Church on this beautiful, fine Sunday morning. If this is your first time in the room, I want to extend a special, special welcome to you. I've already met so many people that are just here for the first time today, and I just so honored and so glad that we get to worship with you today. And I know on the other side of that screen every single week, we got people joining us. So if that is you watching from home or somewhere far, far away, we just want to say welcome. So glad you are with us. Bridge Church, can we put our hands together and just welcome? Come on, give them the extra kind of welcome this morning. Hey, on your way in, you should have received a program. And if you take that out and look at the inside, there's just a little bit about who we are. Maybe answer some of the questions you're having right now. Talks about Bridge Kids, talks about our student ministry, but there's also this QR code. It's up on the screen as well. If this is your first time here, we would love you to take, it's like 15 seconds to fill it out. Just let us know you're here because we have a team out by the front desk. It says new here. We would love to put a name to your face and also give you a gift this morning just to show how much how much gratitude we have that you're with us this morning. But something uh, people often say, we hear this phrase over and over again when they are new is like, I don't know what it is, but there's something different about this place. And maybe that's something different that you'll experience this morning is that we don't pass, pass the plate for offering. We, we believe that God loves a cheerful giver, so we don't want anyone to be pressured into giving. So if you were expecting that to come around, uh, it's actually uh, not gonna happen. We have these blue boxes. We call them joy boxes. And if you plan on giving today, you can just slip those in those on your way out. They're in the exits and also in the lobby. And online, we have this easy way that you can set up reoccurring giving. giving. That's what me and my wife do just to make it uh, simple, to put it first first part of every single month. And so there's all those options for you. Uh, more than just tithing, like this church is a generous church. I love, love, love the community we have. So glad that you are here today to experience a little bit of that. And today you're here on a very special Sunday because today is Vision Sunday. It's something we look forward to so often because it's just a special day. And today I'm going to give you, as the Atumwa campus, give you a little bit of a heads up is that Pastor Marty is sharing a short video on the screen. And that we're the only campus that isn't used to that. Um, but it's because we actually have some other things, exciting things planned later in the service. So, hey, I'm not going to wait any longer. Let's jump into Vision Sunday. Fairfield, we're fired up because it's 
Vision Sunday. If you are brand new to the bridge, I want to just say welcome. My name is Pastor Marty, and it's an honor to have you here. And what you need to know is that two times a year, we do something called Vision Sunday, and it's our opportunity to share with you some things that have happened or some things that are in the works going to happen that we would love for you to know, and also just reveal a little bit of our heart for, for what we think God is drawing us towards from a message standpoint. And also today, just you're going to hear from your campus pastor in just a moment, and he's just going to share something that he thinks is, is specifically dialed in for you. So I'm so fired up. Let's jump in, because this is a big week. This is a big week. I don't know if you realize this. Yes, September 11th, but it's the awake kickoff week. We're doing a tailgating party, age appropriate. Just come on, come on now. But this is for 6th through 12th grade students. It's an all skate. Every campus is kind of gathering together for this awake kickoff event. And I just want to say to Centerville, Fairfield, Oskaloosa, I know you do some windshield time, some extra miles. And I just want to say thank you to all of you leaders for putting in that extra work. We just believe that drawing all of our students from all the campuses together just is a great way just to kind of build the momentum, cast the vision. And honestly, we're believing something dynamic is going to happen this year within our student ministry. God has been on the move. And, and, and there's just something about a hunger for God's word. And so the big kickoff, September 11th, parents, if you're like, I, I, what do I need to know? I'm telling you, go find the awake banner in your lobby space and they will be more than happy to kind of dial you in on all of what you need to know. Now, next Sunday, brand new series, uh, Romans. It's a uh, history changing, life shaping, uh, kingdom building words. That's what, that's what Romans really is. It's just this dynamic book. In fact, uh, Romans is believed to be the most written about book of the books of the Bible. There's 66 books of the Bible, and many people believe that more has been written on the book of Romans. And so we, we know we can't get this book done in four weeks. No, no, no. We're stretching this out to seven, the godly number of perfection. We got a seven-week series on the book of Romans. And, and here, here, here it is. Today, on your way out, we have a gift for you. It is the book of Romans. It looks like this. We got one for every single one of you who says, I want to follow along in the series. And in it, I love it. It's the English standard version, but there's like the scripture. And then there's a place for you to like write notes, ask questions, make comments, kind of, kind of guide it along. And so here's our hope. Here's our heartbeat. Some of you, you're going to be in a connect group. Others of you, you're in a different small group. And we're, we're just saying like, hey, what if you were engaged leading into the Sunday? So next week, the, September 15th, the series starts. And my invitation to you is read chapters one and chapter two. Chapter one, chapter two. The message will come from all of that, some of it. And then the next week, chapters three and four. And we're gonna move forward with that. But I hope, I hope you grab this on the way out and you show up with just a little bit of understanding. There's some big things in here. And so my hope is that we are all learning more about the book of Romans together. Next week is also, I, I know many of you know this, but it's the start of our small groups. We've got men's group, freedom group. We've got uh, alpha and, and there's just, I mean, so many, so many, so many different groups. Your campus pastor would love to help you if you're having trouble. Your next steps would love to help you find the right small group. I can't tell you how important this is. Right now, on a Sunday morning, you're kind of getting inspired. But if you don't engage at your own personal level where you don't have other people in your life, I'm telling you, you're weaker than what you could be. And we want to strengthen you for the journey God has for you. So with that, you sticking with me? Sticking with, all right, here, here's what's next. On September 29th, at the Hub, we're having a Kingdom Builders Vision Night. And for those of you who don't know, we have, we have what is it called our general operating budget that does like... That's what most people give to. And then we have something called Kingdom Builders. And Kingdom Builders really funds the vision. And on a Vision Sunday, I'll usually share like a campus highlight, a campus update, a property update, a facility update. And I know many of you, you're like, so what's going on with the high V building? Or what's going on in Fairfield? Or what's go-? like, and, and so those questions are valid. And we're working on some of the answers. And we're going to share more details on September 29th. So if that's something you want to be a part of, uh, you can RSVP on your connector card. Um, somehow go to next steps and say like, hey, I'd love to be a part of that. You're invited, okay? Two other things I want to make you aware of. Baby blessing, October 20th, because the bridge is good at making babies. I don't know if that will play on a billboard or anything like that, but like there's a chance 
on October 20th, for those of you who have a, a, a under two-year-old, that, to bring them forward, and, and we, we just want to put a blessing on them. We want to bless the parents. We want to bless the child. And so, so that opportunity, I want to make sure you're aware of that. And then there's also baptisms on October 27th. And I got to tell you, some of you, this is your next step. This is what God is kind of like stirring. And, and, and there's a process that you would benefit from. It helps you make sure you're clear, this is my next step. And so if that's you, uh, there's, a, there's a little thing on your connector card. Again, there's, there's a chance to head to next steps. I don't, want to, I don't want to just like, there you go, there you go, there you go. Is this you? Today, like, is God kind of like, hey, hey, because pay attention to that. I have just found when I pay attention to that, that moment, that level of obedience unlocks so much more in my faith life. And I, I just wonder if some of you, 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 every time you hear this, you're like, oh, oh, uh, don't move on. D- like, don't, 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 don't blow it off. Step up, step into that, okay? Over the last uh, few months, I've been working on something with our team. And um, I, I just wanna let you know, like it's in the works. It's called Onboard 3.0. I don't know if that's really its name. That's what I have dubbed it. And the team is kind of like, I guess we're calling it that. Cause it's like the third rendition of Onboard. That's gonna be released sometime in October. And for those of you who are like, man, I'd like to get involved. I wanna get on a team. I wanna, I wanna be a part of something special. Be looking for this. Love to make that happen for you. I said, I said the last things about October, but I forgot. We got stuff in November. There's the Kingdom Builders offering. This funds the Christmas store. This helps us do more support for local missions, like what we're doing in Cambodia, in Nicaragua, what we're doing in the Yucatan. Uh, this, is, this is dynamic in how we invest in the next generation. And honestly, it is what helps fuel um, the ongoing need of remedying environments and facilities for the Bridge Church. So, so that offering, that, that, that happens on November 3rd. And then the very next week, it's called Bring Your Friend to Church Week. Actually, it's called At the Movies. At the Movies is happening November 10th. And I, I just got to tell you, we got a great lineup. Got a great lineup for movies starting November 10th. The Vision Sunday, that, this uh, in Atumwa is also our birthday. So it's the birthday of the Bridge Church. Certain campuses launched at different times and and so their birthdays sometimes come in March or February. But uh, the bridge as an entity, um, it, it, it started 17 years ago. And I had this little, like, I was looking for something. Uh, I remembered us having some language back in the day. And so in the hub, there's a basement. Um, most people are not allowed down there because uh, you can get lost down there. Um, it's, it's spooky. Um, it's all the, all the things you don't want to be, like, it's just cobwebby, you know. And, and, and so we, we keep it as, like, an amazing storage unit. And our team has, throughout the years, just kind of taken what is talked about on Sundays, um, different handouts we might have, um, pictures and things, and they put them in little totes, and then they archive them under the ears. Before, it was just a big pile that sat underneath my desk. But praise the Lord, some people have the gift of organization, and they came along. And so I went down this past week, and I was looking, and I, through, you know, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, those, those formative years when, I'm, I'm just telling you, we had no clue what we were doing. And I was looking for something, and uh, what I found was actually this, the uh, family directory from 2010. And as I was flipping through, I just saw like, oh, there's Alan and Tracy Meninga and Jerry and Marty Fuller and Nancy Swope and Tommy and Jenna. I mean, it's Emily Struby, um, who's Emily Songer at the time. And, and so um, even in here is Olivia Van Manen, age five, now on staff. Wow. Like, and so, so what, was, what was fun is I came across a picture of my family. Um, there you can see uh, the five of us. That means Jenny was eight months pregnant with Sophie. So you got Toby there. Lydia, Blythe, there we are. And uh, I, I just, what was, so I, I, I mean, always whenever you find these old pictures, it's great. But what I was looking for was actually on the back. And I'm gonna kind of like, it, it seems insignificant. And some of you are like, oh, I remember that logo. I remember when that was the logo of the bridge. Some of you, you're like, I have a pen with that on it. I have that black pen. And I would say, you're only original if you have the gray one. There was a gray pen with that. But um, on the bottom of this, and maybe, maybe it's hard to see, um, it's three words. It says, believe, belong, become. 
belief, belong, become. And it was on the back or kind of hidden everywhere we did any kind of print material. Um, I found what we gave to our first time guests, or if you want more information on the Bridge Church, I mean, it's, it's striking, you know, what our creative team could do back then um, compared to now. It, 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 it's, I, I love it though. But you, here you see it says, believe, belong, become. And so I just want to kind of give you these three words, believe, belong, become. They mean something. They've been in the formative years of the Bridge Church. In fact, this was kind of like our first mission or vision language. Some of the ways we would often word is that we want to be a, be a place where you could, um, what we would say is we want to bridge heaven to earth. And if that could happen, we believe, believe, belong, become. And, and, and so, so I was just even looking through this and, and the language is, is, is so, so sunny. We exist to be a people who walk by faith in Christ, are known by his love and are a voice of hope for the purpose of bridging the kingdom of heaven to earth. We wanna be a bridge of faith, love, and hope in and around the community of Atumwa. And here we are in and around. Atumwa, uh, a land of rippling water. Like we used to say like, you know, God, could you do something here and let it ripple out into the other communities? So if you're sitting in Centerville, Fairfield, Oskaloosa, you're an answer to that prayer. Like we believe that God wanted to do something special. So, 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 so believe, belong, become is what used to be our mission language. And I want to let you know that today we're dripping, leaking out. This is our mission language once again. Every once in a while, we adjust our language. Some of you are like, so what are we doing with no God? Find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. We're ditching it. We're done with no. It's good sometimes to refresh language to kind of create a new insight or a new heartbeat to it. And so real briefly, I just wanna, I wanna share in 1 Timothy 4.10, it says, we have put our hope in the living God. And the, this, is, this is who we are believing in. When it comes to belong, therefore encourage one another and build each other up. Like there's just something about belonging together, just as in fact you're already doing. We already got this in motion. Or, or, or what about this? In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing. The gospel's growing. It's becoming something among you. And so I, I just want today to kind of say like, hey, here's where we're going. We're going to be a place, just like we have been, where your lost friends can come and learn more about who Christ is and believe in them. For those of you who already believe, we want to strengthen that belief. For those who are looking for community, we want to say that Christ community, it's thriving and it creates wholeness. I want to let you know that, that this idea of becoming all who God wants us to be, it is available to you. In fact, last Sunday, we kind of shared this verse. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. This is that belief moment. Do you believe? Have you turned to God? And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. This is that belonging component. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is who he's asking you to become. And we've seen it play out over and over and over again. And so in a moment, uh, you're going to hear from your campus pastors. Uh, but before that, I want to share with you Corbin and Sydney's story. Because I believe in, in different elements, it captures the believe, belong, become. Should I start or are you asking? I'll just start the story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, me, I grew up in a family. We were in the uh, church the, all the time. Sundays, Wednesday nights, Sunday nights. We, it seemed like we were always going to church. There was uh, five of us kids, and that was something that my parents really believed in. That was something more on my dad's side of the family. They kind of pulled us into. And for a while, it was forced. Once I hit the age that I realized that it was kind of a forced thing where they weren't asking me, that's what we were doing on Sundays, that's what we were doing on Wednesdays, is... We were going to church. And so I think that made it difficult for me at times to want to go as I got older. Um, and once I made it to college, then kind of chose to take a step back, have a little bit more control of my life, therefore stop going to church. That was something that gave me another another day of the week to not have to spend doing that. And, and so that was kind of where I was when I met Sid. I... 
didn't really, my family didn't really go to church that much. It was more of like, I don't know, once a, every six months, they're like, oh, maybe we should go to church. So then I'd go, but um, when I met Corbin, I hadn't really, I mean, I believed in God, but I wasn't close to him and we weren't active. I wasn't actively going to church or anything like that. And so that was kind of where we were when we were met. We both kind of had fallen out of going to church and being close to God, but we both still believed in God. And so we kind of met, oh, I don't know, yeah, 2020 online. Definitely was like weird time. COVID, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't really go out and meet people. So yeah, then we had our first date and then kind of, I think both of us kind of knew, was like, I think this person's probably going to be it for me after one date. And that's kind of, I don't know about, I don't even think it was a year after being together that we ended up getting married. So yeah, engaged, Enga- engaged, engaged a year yeah. after yeah. and then yeah, got married six months after the engagement. Yeah. <laughs> four of those months we weren't even together because I was doing training and so planned the whole wedding apart weren't even together and then I came back from training and then within about three weeks we got married yeah and so it was pretty all quick then uh shortly after what two months after being married or so yeah yeah, July, yeah, yeah. two three months after being married then we got pregnant and it super scary exciting we uh, front, you know, it was, it was planned in a way. And uh, as time went on, we were kind of trying to figure out how do we tell our parents? How do we do, you know, it was, it was a very exciting time. and It just happened, like, immediately. Yeah, and so we're like, this is crazy. Like, we were just super excited, and I think that... And you were scared. Yeah, I scared. Remember. There was a couple nights of crying, like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, maybe we weren't ready, and... Um, um, we ended up losing uh then our first child there eight weeks after and, and it was tough i was working in des moines at the time and so we got a call and i was trying to rush back and she was already at the hospital and that was uh a, a very everything was very happy and building aggressively and and that was a low you know that that was kind of the first one that we had to uh conquer together and you can kind of talk yeah. about it uh those nights of like crying be like I'm not ready for this like I don't know if we're ready for this and then when we did uh had the miscarriage and we lost um them it was just like I kind of felt some guilt like of those nights that I was crying I felt some guilt like was this because of me like did God think that I wasn't ready because I was saying those things like did I like put this out into the world and and he heard he heard me crying about not being ready and I'm like I was sometimes would just tell him like I didn't mean it like I was ready I wanted him like I was just scared at that moment and it was a lot of guilt like this was my fault like this was my fault because I felt like I wasn't ready when I got everything that I was asking for I was like we've been asking God for this and then we got it and then I was scared and then it got taken away and I think that kind of brought me down into like this deep kind of hole for a while and so I was like sorry (laughs) and so um yeah, I was just like, yeah. It was hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and it was hard for both. And we were in a, we were in a weird time because we wanted to tell our parents and our friends and our family. And, and we didn't at that point. And so when we, uh, yeah. when we lost them, we, we only had us. And, and we didn't have anyone else to lean on. And, uh, and we were, do we tell we did, them? Yeah, we didn't want to tell them like, that we, that's like, yeah, that we had, but, yeah. but now we lost. And it, so we kind of suffered alone together and we didn't really talk about it much so it was like we were both kind of just suffering alone but like together I guess mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know we were in the under the same roof but uh we weren't yeah we, we yeah. were ready to talk to each other about it and it was I mean at least a month month and a half or so before we were able to have conversations about that it, it really hurt yeah and and as time goes on sure it heals and at that moment we didn't we didn't have a ton of faith we didn't have, we weren't attending church when we went through that and so it we were mad you're mad yeah we were we were mad and and it's it's easy to blame uh 
blame someone else yeah. when, when, when we were mad. There was still something that we, we yeah, like missed, I guess. There was something that, that wasn't there, mm -hmm. that we both knew something was missing. We both knew that we need something more. We can't, it just can't just be us and just us to face everything. And now I guess it was just that longing for something more. And that was where we like made this active decision. Like, I think, you know, we, we need to find a church. We need to start going. Like this is too much for us to handle. Like we can't do it on our own. Yeah. And so. And, started, and even yeah. with that, you know, we, we kind of made the decision. We want to find a church. We want to do some of that, but it was, since the heartbreak and then the time after that, it was a year. I mean, almost a year or more because then finding the church, it was that following September and we lost the first one there in November. So yeah, it would have been shortly. So yeah. it, it wasn't was, a quick, it yeah. wasn't like a quick, it was a lot of wallowing. And then we're like, we can't do this anymore. Like this is, we can't stay here anymore. We got to either we're going to be unhappy or we're going to need to figure out a way to like get out of this. And then we saw the bridge we came here on this what the yeah, second? second second week they were open that we we heard about it opening up a new church and we're like well we're new to it they're new to it to this area at least you know let's uh let's give it a shot and and we came and i think it just it felt different you know the, the first day we walked in and and everything was it i mean it was it's in a building that isn't a traditional church and then we get into the auditorium and Derek gets up on stage, he says a little bit, and then he leaves the stage, and they turn on a TV to listen to church. And yeah, it was like, yeah, we were like, oh, I just remember whispering back and forth, like, oh, he's not going to talk. Like, he's not. So now we're just going to listen to the screen. Who's the guy on the yeah. screen? You know, and it was, it was so interesting. And then it was after that service, though, I remember just talking in the car and be like, that was so different. But, like, I paid attention, and, and I got stuff out of it, and it was, it was good, you know, and, and. During that message, I don't recall exactly if it was Marty or who it was that, that preached that Sunday, but uh, in there it was talking about trusting in God 100%, giving 100% of your trust and faith to God. And I think that's what we were yeah. missing. And we realized that then on just that first day is like, we need to start trusting in God 100%. And that became a saying in our house. And we, we would say it to each other when we felt that there was something that like, no, we just need, we need to give it to God. We need to trust in God hundred percent. And so there shortly after in, uh, October or end of September, then, uh, we got pregnant again and terrifying, you know, it, it, the difference between the excitement slash fear that we had before. Now this was just fear because you can only assume it, it's, it's going to end bad. I mean, it ended bad the last time. And so we kept telling ourselves we need to trust in God. 100%. I guess as our time grew, we realized, okay, we're going to church on Sunday. We need more. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we don't, we didn't know anybody. Yeah. We, we were going to church on Sunday and it was like, we're two, three months into this. And Derek knew our name from saying hi, you know, at the door, but, but he was it. We didn't know anybody else. And so it was, okay, how do we get to know people? And then onboarding came up as an opportunity. We're like, you know what? I think we can help out more. And so we chose to do that and got connected with the bridge kids. And then we got connected through small groups mm -hmm. and, you know, it, small groups was, I mean, that's probably what made the biggest difference for us. It gave us the opportunity, especially in a connect group, you have the opportunity to have people with a little bit more wisdom than you have who have been attending the church to after a Sunday, I'm so curious. And I just want to ask those questions and Sid takes lots of notes and she's <laughs> sometimes hesitant to ask the questions, but I tell him my questions. He'd ask but yeah, so we would, we would just go to the small group and, and we had Nancy and we had, uh, Brad and Debbie and Jerry and Marty and it, it just so many people would just, that have been here and that know. And so we were able to just put those questions, Phil and Lona were there and it was like just amazing to just put questions out to them and let them help us. They prayed with us. They prayed before they prayed out, you know, and it, it was like that instant belonging. Like, this yeah. is what we're kind of looking for. Like, we feel like we belong. Yeah, this is our family. These are our friends. And and that's the biggest thing. We just, we don't feel alone anymore. We have people to call. We have people to to talk to about, you know, the things that we suffer in. And it's just, it's made a, made a big difference.
Hey, can we give it up for what God is doing in the Muir family's lives? I don't know about you, but when I hear that, I just get so encouraged. It's so encouraging seeing people go from here to there. And that is Vision Sunday. That is the vision. We want to see more people go from here to there. And so on this, what has already been an incredible morning together, we're going to continue. But it may look a little bit different because rather than me bringing a message and broadcasting it to the Bridge Church, today we are having like a, a family conversation with the Atumwa campus because every campus pastor was asked to bring a word for their specific campus. And so as I've been praying about, God, what do you want to share on Vision Sunday? I ask God, would you give me big picture vision? Give me like a 10,000 foot view of how you want to use the Bridge Church in Atumwa and surrounding areas and beyond. And I just think that there's a certain level of health realizing we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. And about six years ago, I started dating my wife and on, on one of our first date, uh, a big red flag came up. I'm just going to put this out there, okay? Something came up. I'm like, I don't know if I can keep going forward because she shared. She said, I don't understand Star Wars. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean you don't understand Star Wars? And she's like, I mean, I've seen the newest one. Uh, and I'm like, but you've seen all the others. And she's like, no. And I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, there's 10 other movies and six TV shows that come before the new one. And I'm like, it's so simple. They came out with number four, and number five, number six. Then they came out with one and two and three, and then two prequel movies between three and four. And then they came out with seven, eight, nine. I'm like, it just makes sense for everyone. How could you be confused? <laughs> But I got a good update, okay? I have a good update on this Vision Sunday because about a month ago, we did a binge watch of all of the Star Wars movies, and I will never forget where I was sitting, the dates and everything. It was just a perfect atmosphere when she uttered the words, I think I love Star Wars. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> it worked. But there's some truth to this, right? There's some truth because it's hard to jump into something when you don't see the bigger story. Each Star Wars movie is impressive on its own, but all fits into a larger story. Every movie is a part of something bigger. And this is where I want to go today. We are a part of something bigger than ourselves. I mean, even as we sit in this building right now, what is known as the hub, this is actually, this is exciting. This is the 100th anniversary of this building. I mean, how, how cool is that? Just the legacy behind this building. I think it says down below, yeah, the, the, what was originally the new YWCA. At one point, this was new. And isn't it crazy to think about these were the kind of cars that were pulling up to this building when it first opened. And uh, many of you probably did not get a glimpse of what this looked like before we renovated, but this is standing from the doorway. This is what it looked like when we first bought this building before we renovated. And I was just thinking about this, like we walk into these doors with so much hope and I'm just excited for every single, like what was the original heartbeat that they wanted people to walk into? And I found, as I was doing some research, I found this quote online. I just found it so encouraging. It said, located in the heart of Atumwa, this site provided a refuge for young women, offering them welcoming space to grow receive encouragement, and develop skills needed to achieve their full potential. I love that. A hundred years ago, this was the vision. And I say, now this, this holds the Bridge Church with honestly similar vision. You just heard from Pastor Mark. Our heartbeat is that people would come as they are. We, we, we want this church to be a church that our friends would want to come to. And so our, our heartbeat is like we want people, that we're praying for people, would Believe, belong, become a part of something bigger than themselves. And so I want to encourage you today. You are a part of something bigger. Your story, your history, it's a part of something bigger. I encourage you, like your story fits into the greater story that God is telling. And in 1 Peter, you get this passage. It says, as you come to him, talking about Jesus, the living stone, everything that God is building in his kingdom is built on Jesus. He says he was rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. He says, you also. So now he's talking to us as believers, as the church. He says, you also are like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. The church, I love how he talks about us as living stones. The church was never a building. The church always has been and always will be God's people. And I think it's worth slowing down and just saying, you, 
you play a part in his story. You are this living stone that he's talking about that God wants to use to build his kingdom, to build the church. And I think it's worth saying on Vision Sunday, it's not about a high V building. It's not about the at the movies series. It is just what we heard, the, the testimonies of people, the wins and the stories. That is what keeps us moving forward. And so I got this illustration today, and it's just God, brick by brick, person by person, God is building his church. And uh, I just took this straight from our flower garden today, okay? This is fresh, fresh from the landscape, okay? Now, he says living stones, and I was like, that sounds too heavy for me to carry on stage today. So we're going with brick, but what can you do with one single brick? Not much, right? You're like, what, what do I do with this? Like, throw it at a windshield? Like, there's not much you can do with one brick. Only destruction, but when the brick knows its purpose, when you use it for its purpose, it's a beautiful thing. Every brick has a purpose to, in building of a house. And just like us, we all have a purpose in his church. And so if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you three purposes of a brick. And the first one is Availability. A brick is available. You can't build something if you don't have materials. I can't go out and say, I'm going to build a brick house but have no bricks. And so what I want to bring up today is your greatest ability to God is your availability. I'm going to say that again. Your greatest ability to God is your availability. It makes me think of the, the first disciples. As Jesus was walking up, he meets these two guys Peter and Andrew, and I think sometimes we overcomplicate what it looks like to follow Jesus. Like, it all has to be perfect. It, like, it just has to make sense. I got to do this and this and this and this. But we get this verse, and it was not that at all. They just meet Jesus, and it says, they left their nets at once and followed him. They left their nets at once and followed him. I want to ask you today, do you have a yes spirit towards God? Scripture shows that, like, God doesn't choose the most educated, the most gifted, the most talented. He chooses the people that are available and say yes to him. I have this buddy who has just, like, the crazy, you ever have that friend that just, like, has the craziest stories? I mean, th this, this guy just has the craziest stories, and his, the way God is using him in his ministry is so, so awesome to watch. And I just expected him to have the super long, complicated, amazing testimony. But he shocked me when I remember he was sharing. He's like, I can share my testimony in 15 seconds. I'm like, whoa. He's like, I, here it is. Crazy things have happened in my life. And I know it's because I've said yes and yes and yes and yes and yes to God. And I don't know what's coming next, but I want in. And I don't know about you, but you hear, I, like, I hear that and I want, I want more of that. I want more of that. And so maybe there's a group here today that you believe in Jesus. You believe what Jesus has done for your life. But maybe deep down you know you haven't committed heart and soul to following him. There's a difference between believing in Jesus and following Jesus. And I just hear the this testimony of the Mir family. I mean, this is this is crazy. Vision Sunday was last year was the one year anniversary of the Oskaloosa campus. I mean, can we give it up for what God has done in one year? And they, they shared that it was the second Sunday. That, so next week would be their one year. And just imagine, like, think about what one year can do when you choose in to what God has for your life. I mean, I love that they were just naming names. They're like Phil and Lona and like all these people like just choosing in. God did in the community. They said they, feel, they felt known. And so I want to ask the question, if that is you, you're just like, I, I want that. I want what I heard in that testimony, just the, the way they spoke with joy and hope. I want that for my life. What would it look like for you to commit from here to the end of the year to be available? Pastor Marty said there's three series left. We got the Roman series, we got the At the Movie series, and we got the Christmas series. What would it look like for you to say, I'm going to make sure I'm in the room, and I'm going to show it with expectancy that God can do what only he can do. Because your availability, can, God can transform your life. But it's not just your availability transforming your own life, but he can transform those around you as well. So when we say yes to God, we're open 
we open ourselves to being a part of something beyond what we could ever build alone. So we got to be available. But the second thing is connection. A brick is connected. Imagine for Christmas, it's Christmas morning, you're so excited. You're like, what am I going to get? You stick your hand down into the stocking and you get one Lego brick. (laughs) I think all of us would be like, wow, parents did a big budget cut from last year. Like, (laughs) that was so underwhelming. This is all, like, I could have got at least like a small spaceship. One Lego brick. We all know, like, that's wrong, right? Because what a Lego brick is supposed to do, it's supposed to build upon the other. A Lego, the whole point of a Lego brick is to build upon others, add to something greater. We were never meant to do life alone. God created us to do it with other people. We, and so in 2024, the rest of it, and going into 2025, we have to fight for unity. We see so many marriages suffocating, so many business partners giving up because the enemy loves to sow seeds of division, even in church. God created us. The whole point of church is to do it together. So, I heard this. Oh, I got this. Mark 3.25 says, And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And I read this question in a book that's just stuck with me all these years. It says, If everyone in the church behaved like you, would it be stronger or weaker? If everyone in the church behaved like you, would it be stronger or weaker? And I just don't want to be someone that is another person pointing out the problems, assuming the worst. I want to lead with believing the best. I want to lead with encouraging, building people up, fighting for together, because that's how God created it to be. And if you feel like, I just don't feel a part of the church. I come to church. I don't feel a part of the church. I wonder if you asked God this week sometime, God, what is my role? God, what? What is my role to play in this church? Because my guess is God's not going to answer and say, hey, just sit on the sideline. I got this. No. God's always asking us into more, asking us to surrender more. Here's the beautiful part about the church. We all have different gifts. Some people have the gift of giving. Some people have the gift of raising up the next generation. Some people have the gift of going across the entire world and bringing the light of Jesus wherever they go. It's togetherness. The enemy loves to divide. There's not much you can do with one Lego brick. But imagine if we all said, turned in our Lego piece. I want in on what God is doing. I want in on this something special that God is building, His kingdom. Let's just start with the Bridge Church. There's about 2,500 people that attend the Bridge Church. Imagine if 2,500 people said, I want in. What could we do with 2,500 Lego bricks? I mean, who knows what we can build together? So if you're looking at ways to be connected, we got small groups, September 15th, next week. This is the place that you don't, you go from just sitting in rows and consuming, but now you're sitting in a circle. And this is the way God created it to be, to be giving, receiving, to be praying for one another. And so I just want you, on the back of your notes, there's a QR code with all the small groups, and there's so many groups, and they're all great groups. Just take a look sometime this week. See if there's one that pops. See if there's one that works for your schedule. And then onboard 3.0. Oh, man, I get fired up because this is what unlocked for me is I was just coming in. I actually walked through the doors of the Bridge Church, didn't know a single person, and it was onboard. We're serving. I thought it was for other people, but it ended up blessing me more than I will. Oh, you have a gift, and at Onboard, we're going to help you realize what your gift is and how you can live out your purpose within the church. So that's October 15th. You can put that in your calendar. So a brick. Person in the kingdom. You as an individual, we got to be available. we got to be connected. It's about legacy. It's about legacy. Have you ever walked past an old building and you're just like, I wonder what this was back in the day. Anyone else do that? You're just like, you see an old building, you're like, at one point, this building was thriving. At one point, this was new. This meant so much to someone. My guess is that this building, no one remembers it being built. Because if you remember it being built, you're like 110 years old and like, hey, go you, okay? <laughs> we need to meet up after. I'm like, what's your diet? Because I want in on that. But buildings... Bricks have a way of illustrating legacy. 
And the British Church didn't build this building, but if I were to point at one place that has just impacted my life more than I can even put to words, a place that represents life change and community for me and my wife, it would be this building. I'm so glad that the YWCA built this building. Anyway, here, here's where I'm going with this. God is inviting us into a story that transcends time. A story that echoes through generations. Your impact today can maybe change a life of a second grader. That can go on and change a life down the road of a, a seventh grader and go build up a leader down the road. I mean, we may not even see it. There's a story of this person, he's like kind of discouraged. He's like, I don't even, I think I've only brought one person to know Jesus Christ. And they kind of like went back in the story and figured that person was Billy Graham. It's the ripple effect. That one person he was discouraged by but led to thousands, millions, who knows? The Bridge Church is 17 years old today, which is a fun milestone. But here's the thing about Pastor Marty's leadership. I know we're revving the engine. We're not done yet. We, we want more. I believe God's got more for the Bridge Church, more life change, more, more baptisms. I want in on what God is doing to, to rebuild, repair, restore so more people could believe, belong, become. And so today as we end, I just as we celebrate our 17th birthday, but also the 100th birthday of this building, I wondered, like, what if, we, what if we just, like, this moment right now, don't let it go, but, like, what if we committed to, as a church, as the body of Christ, to 100 more years? And your, your mind goes to where I went. Like, we're not going to see 100 years from now. But what, what if we laid the foundation so the next generation go farther and higher than we ever could? I want in on that. I want in on that. Alone, a brick seems insignificant, but together... Can you imagine? Me right now, just bow your heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the praise for what you've done in the last 17 years through the Bridge Church. We praise you for all the life change. We just think about all the baptisms we've seen with our own eyes, all the people take next steps. Lord, we, we, we couldn't have done this by ourselves. We need you. And we just give you all the praise and the glory for everything that we have seen, for every person that has said yes to you. Maybe just think about your life and where you were maybe a year ago or 10 years ago. Once we were lost, but now we are found. And so our own selves, we just come with a, a sense of gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. But we look forward to the next 100 years. And it may seem like a daunting thing, but we say big prayers. We dream big dreams because we believe you are a God that can. And so right now, Lord, we, we say yes to you. Maybe just in your own heart, just commit yourself or a recommitment. God, I'm saying yes to you, going forward, looking forward with hope for the next hundred years. I'm gonna play my part. So as we say yes to more kids, to more students, to raising them up, to teaching them what it looks like to pray, what it looks like to fall in love with your scripture and your truth. We say yes to raising up more young adults, more leaders in this world. We need more leaders that are just on fire for you, that don't want to move forward unless it is your word. Lord, we say yes to more discipleships that will lead to more meals, more baptisms, more community. We say yes to going forward where we didn't even, we didn't even know, but it was you all along. We didn't even have a plan yet. We say yes to the things we can't even think of right now. We want to go into more unreached areas, reach more people. People that said, I never thought I would go to church, but God's doing something incredible. Yes, God, we want more of that, more of that. So we look forward, God, 100 years. Would you do what only you can do, all for your glory? We pray this in your mighty name. And together we said, amen.